In this video, we'll review some important facts about common functions that you may have seen. Let's start with a fairly boring function, the constant function, f of x equals b. And that b there could be any constant. So we're talking about functions like f of x equals 5, f of x equals negative 4, and so on. So all of these graphs are going to look like horizontal lines. The y-intercept is going to be at the point 0, comma b. In fact, every point on this graph has a y-coordinate b. The domain is all real numbers. There's nothing in that formula, f of x equals b, that would prevent us from plugging in any values of x. And the graph is also symmetric about the y-axis. If we were to flip this picture over with the y-axis being in the middle, then the graph would look the same. Slightly more interesting, but still fairly boring as functions go, is the identity function, f of x equals x. This is the function that has the property that no matter what you plug into this function, you get the exact same thing back out. So, Using our knowledge of linear functions, we know that the graph here is going to be a line with slope 1 passing through the origin, 0, 0. And that means that our x-intercept and our y-intercept of this graph are both at the origin, at 0, 0. Once again, the domain is all real numbers. This time, the graph has a different kind of symmetry. It's symmetric about the origin. So if we were to take this picture and rotate it 180 degrees, a half turn, around the origin, then the graph would look the same. Next up, a little bit more interesting, we've got the square function, f of x equals x squared. The graph looks like a parabola. Once again, the x-intercept and the y-intercept are both at the origin, at 0, 0. The domain is all real numbers. There's nothing preventing us from plugging any numbers into the formula x squared. And once again, the graph here is symmetric about the y-axis. Again, if we were to flip this graph over, take this part and flip it over to become this part, and vice versa, then the graph would not change. Next up, we've got the cube function, f of x equals x cubed. The graph here sort of looks like a twisted parabola. The right-hand side still has that parabola-type shape, but the left-hand side kind of looks like it's been twisted and flipped upside down. The x-intercept and the y-intercept are both at 0, 0. The domain is all real numbers. Again, there's, we can plug whatever number we want into x cubed. And this has that rotational symmetry about the origin again. If we were to take this picture and rotate it 180 degrees around the origin, the picture wouldn't change. Next up, we've got the square root function, f of x equals the square root of x. The graph kind of looks like the graph of x squared, well, half of it anyway, that's been turned over onto its side. The x-intercept and the y-intercept are both at the origin. This time we have a restricted domain, though. We, we can't take the square root of a negative number, so the domain of this function is values of x that are greater than or equal to 0. We can take the square root of 0, the square root of 0 is 0, but we can't take the square root of any negative numbers. And this graph doesn't have any symmetry. What about the cube root function? Well, the square root graph kind of looked like the graph of x squared, so it shouldn't be too surprising that the cube root graph looks a little something like the x cubed graph. And it does. The graph of the cube root looks like the graph of x cubed flipped over. The x-intercept and the y-intercept are both of the origin. The domain is all real numbers. We can't take the square root of a negative number, but we can take the cube root of a negative number. And this graph is symmetric about the origin. Again, if we were to rotate it a half turn, the graph would look the same. Next up, we have the reciprocal function, f of x equals 1 over x. This graph actually doesn't have any x or y intercepts. The graph never crosses the x-axis or the y-axis. The domain is all real numbers except 0. We can take the reciprocal of anything other than 0. And this graph is also symmetric about the origin. Finally, we have the absolute value function, f of x equals the absolute value of x. Remember that what that does is if we plug a positive number into the absolute value, nothing happens. But if we plug a negative number into the absolute value function, then the absolute value gets rid of the negative. So you can see some of these points that are plotted here. The absolute value of 2 is 2, but the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. This graph has x-intercepts and y-intercepts both at the origin again, 0, 0. The domain is all real numbers. And the graph is symmetric about the y-axis. Again, if we were to flip this over, the left side would get flipped over onto the right side, and the right side would get flipped over onto the left side. So we have that symmetry again.